September marks the second equinox of the year, the autumnal equinox. Of course, we know that summer and winter come as the earth tilts toward or away from the sun. When this tilting reaches its midway point, it's called the equinox. Equinox comes from a combination of Latin words, aequi for equal and nox for night. Unlike the solstice, which determines the longest or shortest day of the year, the equinox is the moment in time when day and night are equal in length. The equinox happens twice a year, once in March, around the 21st, and again in September, on about the 23rd. When we look at the moon, what are we looking at? Here's some basic moon geography. Corn, a cash crop, is grown commercially the world over. Not only is corn a staple food for many, it's a major ingredient, additive, or component in a wide variety of products from gasoline in the form of ethanol to livestock feed. Some of the more interesting uses of corn is its use in the production of rubber tires, the ones on your car, toothpaste, glue for envelopes, spark plugs, deodorant, and biodegradable plastics such as plastic bags and cups. And for any of you fans of the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding, corn is used in, you guessed it, Windex. Windex has five different ingredients that come from corn. With a market share of 30.9%, the United States is by far the world's largest producer and exporter of corn. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, the U.S. production of corn ended with the harvesting of 345.96 million metric tons during the 2019-20 season. Compare this with the closest competitor, China, which saw 260.78 million metric tons produced in the same season. Brazil is the world's third largest producer of corn, producing less than a third of U.S. production numbers. And Mexico, where corn has its roots, produces a mere 26,600 metric tons, coming in as the eighth largest producer. The amount of U.S. land in acres used to produce corn year after year varies but the number reaches as high as 90 million acres all across the country. The major area where corn is grown in the U.S. is known as the Corn Belt. The Corn Belt is made up of all or parts of 13 states, from Kansas, Missouri, and Kentucky in the south, to Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and North Dakota in the north. It also includes South Dakota, Nebraska, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio, with the king of corn being Iowa, where most U.S. corn is produced. The World Atlas reports that 75% of all U.S. produced corn comes from the Corn Belt. Did you know? Corn is a member of the grass family. Grasses that are cultivated for human consumption are known as cereals. Other cereal grains from grasses include wheat, barley, and oats. Corn is the only influential cereal grain indigenous to the Western Hemisphere. There are six types of corn, dent or field corn, sweet corn, popcorn, flour corn, flint corn, 
and pod corn. Dent corn, or field corn, is the most common type of corn grown in the United States. This corn type gets its name from the small dent seen on the crown of the kernel. The dent is formed as the kernel ripens and the starch in the center shrinks. Dent corn is high in starch and low in sugars and is not meant to be eaten on or off the cob, but is found in foods like sweeteners, corn chips, tortillas, and tamales. It's primarily produced to make ethanol and animal feed. Dent corn is harvested when it's mature and the kernels are dry. Sweet corn, on the other hand, is harvested while still immature, before the sugars turn to starch in what's known as the milk stage. It's what we eat for dinner, on the cob, or as a side, off the cob. Sweet corn is best right after harvest. The appeal for sweet corn comes from its high sugar content and milkiness where the creaminess of the corn comes from. To preserve its sweet taste, this corn is often frozen soon after harvesting. Popcorn. We all love popcorn. Popcorn is its own type of corn, but is a variety of flint corn. This corn is harvested mature when the stalk and leaves are brown and dry. According to the website popcorn.org, most of the world's popcorn is produced in the United States. The exterior of popcorn has a hard outer shell of starch that traps the moisture of the kernel. After harvest, the corn is dried to a moisture point of around 14%. As the kernel is heated and the moisture turns to steam at around 212 degrees Fahrenheit, the kernel pops into the delicious snack we all know. Popped popcorn has been around for a long time, but it was Charles Creeters who made the stuff readily accessible and popular as a mass consumption treat. You see, it was Creeters, a candy store owner from Chicago, who invented the first popcorn popping machine in the 1880s. Not only did Charles Creeters invent the popcorn machine, he introduced it on horse-drawn wagons that roamed the city of Chicago. Popcorn is popped off the cob, but did you know? If you place a cob of popcorn in the paper bag and microwave it, you get popcorn on the cob. Flint corn, also known as Indian corn, calico corn, and heirloom corn gets its name from its texture, the kernel said to be as hard as flint. Flint corn is recognizable by its multicolored kernels. It is cultivated for milling into cornmeal. Flint corn is a high nutrient grain, and of course, flint or Indian corn is often used as a decoration in the fall. Unlike pop and flint corn, flower corn is made up of soft starches. The softness of the kernel makes it easy to grind the corn into flour. This flour is used to make all kinds of foods. Remember though, that tortillas, tamales, and corn chips are made from dent corn. Pod corn is the sixth type of corn. It's actually a mutant corn. Pod corn has no real role in food. Each kernel is wrapped in small leaves, resulting in the name pod corn. Pod corn is used for ornamental purposes and is not grown commercially. Here are some fun facts about corn. Corn stalks usually reach between 7 and 10 feet high. The Guinness World Record stock grew to an amazing 48 feet 2 inches. That's a five-story building. The plant has two flowers, one male, one female. The male flower is the tassel you see at the top of the plant. The female flower is the ear with the kernels. For corn to mature, pollen from the male flower is blown onto the corn silk, which drips down to each kernel. Sometimes, not all kernels are pollinated because the silk dries out, which is why we see cobs with missing kernels. Corn is ready to harvest about 20 days after the silk appears. Each cob of corn 
can have between 500 and 1,000 kernels, and they always come in rows of even numbers.